Hey Simonis, what's up? Welcome to a new Ionic tutorial. Today we will talk about the Ionic split pane because I noticed uh, I actually don't have a tutorial on it and I also didn't really found anything useful on the internet. So we will implement an Ionic split pane, which is basically a component that you can put around a menu. So you will have a regular menu on a small screen, but once your screen gets bigger, the menu will automatically be shown on the side. And we will uh, first of all implement the basics, then we will get into a bit of customization. And finally, we will also make this a collapsible component with a little hack. So let's get started. I already created a blank new Ionic project so we can uh, build everything from the ground up. We will need one page to actually hold our split pane setup and then uh, three additional pages to just move a bit around inside our application. Once you get this in place, you can uh, run Ionic Surf, which I already did here and I changed a bit of color here, but nothing really fancy so far. What we need to do first of all is change our app routing because usually all your pages are added in here but we want to make our split page the first page in our application. So we will also add another, no I can't take this, <laughs> it should look like this, another path for an empty route, add a redirect to app and we only want to match this uh, if this is really just an empty path. So just a bit of fallback. Uh, to uh, allow that we can actually open the app with a blank URL and then it will redirect to app. Cool, this will now load our split page module if we implement it like this. And within that split page module we will now implement the real routing for our app. So in case you um, get like a login page or an introduction or something like this, you can easily have the login page as the first page and then once you're done with the login, you can uh, navigate to this entry. It really makes this a lot easier. In some examples, you will see that they set it up in the app component. I really don't recommend it. Uh, leave the app component as it is. It holds our Ion app tag uh, and the generic Ion router outlet and that's fine. So let's move into the split layout routing module. First of all, this is like the parent component uh, for our routing. And then you implement children that can be displayed within that module. Because if we take a look at the split page uh, layout, which doesn't really look like this, um, we can actually, uh, well, let's just remove this. <laughs> um, do I have a shortcut for split pane? That would be cool. Oh, I got, I got, interesting. Um, okay, that implements actually everything that's available. I'll just remove a lot of this. So, what we can see from the split pane setup is we have three important elements. We got the ion split pane, which surrounds everything. We got an ion menu inside, and we got an ion router outlet. And it's important that the content ID here here and the ID of the Ion Router outlet have the same name. So it could be menu, uh, it could also be like main. Just make sure you got the same in all the three places. Now, then we got the menu within the split pane. Uh, we don't really need a menu ID, uh, content ID is fine. Site start is actually the classic or the default and type overlay is also the default. So let's get just rid of this and then we can implement the site menu. This is the part of the UI that you see on the site. So let's just call this menu. And here we would implement the menu items of our application. Cool, if we now check it out, uh, we'll see that nothing really works so far because we haven't added our routing uh, or because I added the child routing. Let's see how it looks without that part. Can you actually do something without that? Yeah you can just play an empty page. Um, actually, on <laughs> bigger screens, we already see that we got our split pane. So here's the menu, and this is the Ion Router outlet that you can see right here. And whenever we navigate, uh, the Angular Router will resolve the URL and display it within this router outlet, which is now our page right here. This is a different story, this is a menu. You can do whatever you want inside the menu, but here's the real content area. So in order to allow navigating and displaying items, we can now finally move into the children. 
And for the children, we want to use the three pages that we added to our page. So we've added a first page, we've added a second page, and we added a details page, which I'll just make available as first slash details to show that you can somehow navigate from the first page to this. You could even uh, add multiple records and just call this one um, second details. That would work totally fine as well. So you can reuse details play, uh, pages or general pages in different places. Okay. So we've got our three children. Now, if you think about our routing once again and check out the app routing, you will notice one thing. If you start the app like this with a blank slash, we would have a redirect here to app, which means uh, the next routing module would load. But once we come to this module, we actually have an empty path. So it wouldn't open any of our pages. And that means if I go to this, you see we have app and no page displayed. And therefore, in this case, we also need another redirect and I will put it into the front um, because otherwise uh, it will just go into this entry and not find anything helpful. So we will add this right at the top, redirect to first so we can display the first page. And once again, let's make the path match full. Otherwise, it might um, use this redirect on different places. And there we see, now we're not only redirecting to app, what we are also redirecting to first. And on smaller screens, we should see first is just the page here. Uh, can I, yeah, I can actually already pull the menu in from the side on smaller screens, but we will later also add the menu toggle button. But cool that this already works. It's actually nice. So uh, we got the routing in place. Um, we got the app routing. Let's add some uh, path to our um, markup here. Inside the content is the place where you want to put your routing. Um, you could actually also make this like a component um, and just inject the component. If you don't want to have all your setup in here, that would be fine as well. Now let's uh, create ion items. Uh, router link to slash app slash first and router direction should be set to root in this case. Uh, I will show you why in a second. Also, you can add the router link active, which I think is really cool because this automatically adds the class, for example, the active link class to this item once the router link of this item is active. So inside we will just put an ion label. We will name this one first and I will copy this and just change everything to second, second and that's it. With those two items in place, we can now open it and we see we can actually already move around. But there's one addition that we can add to make this even cooler because on smaller screens, we can pull in the menu and you see that once we switch between them, the URL switches and in the background, the page would also switch, but the menu is not closed. And we can do this automatically using another Ionic component and that one is called the Ion Menu Toggle. So we will just surround our items with this component Ion menu toggle. Yeah, maybe I should just close it, format the page and reload. And then we will see that we can pull in the menu, move to second and the menu gets closed automatically. So that's really the usual behavior that you want to see in your application. The only problem is now, where are my items? Um, the problem with Ion menu toggle is that normally if a menu is visible like this, it will hide the items. Actually, I'm not sure why this is the default because it's usually used in a setup like this. So I can't really, well, yeah, I, I just don't know <laughs> why it's there, but we can fix it by using auto hide false. So that means please don't automatically hide those items. And if we now go back to our page, we should see we can use first, we can use second and everything works like a charm and on small devices, same story, first and second still working. Okay, great. We got menu items and we got the split pane working. 
Um, I also wanted to add this active link. So let's get into our styling and let's simply add a styling for the active link to change the color and the font weight. And now we will see that the active link was already added. Whenever we switch pages, the new styling gets automatically applied. So I really like this router link active. Uh, it really makes life a lot easier. You don't need to subscribe to route changes or listen to anything anymore. That's really all you need and that's really cool. So let's also open our first page now and add a toggle because right now uh, we can't really open the menu. So let's get into our toolbar. Let's use ion buttons slot start. And within we simply put an ion menu button. That's actually everything that we need to display a burger button like this that can toggle our menu. And because we got two pages, let's also add it to the second page so we can uh, open our menu from all the pages. So first, second, second, first. And now the cool thing about the menu button is on bigger screen, it's automatically hidden since we already got that menu. We will get back to this for a collapsible version in the end, but for now, that's the default behavior of the ion menu button. You could also pass in um, an ID if you have different menus. We used this in the past as well. Uh, we also got a menu with um, like uh, detail navigation so you could dive into first and then another item would come up with using custom ionic nav. Uh, you can also find a video about this on this channel. But for now uh, let's also make sure that we can move into our details page. And for that we can simply add another button because if you take another look at the split layout routing module uh, we already added this path. It's just important to note that once we arrive in here, we already got an app within our path. So the router resolves the different path of your URL. Um, and if we arrive here, the app would already be resolved, but still we need to include it here because otherwise with relative URLs, I usually get into a lot of trouble. So with that in place, we can use this button to move to our details page and it actually works. Now we also need a way to get back from the details page and for that it's quite easy. Once again, uh, don't mess up your markup and then simply add the ion buttons slot start or end, whatever you prefer and the ion back button. That's everything we need. If we're now on the details page, if we reload on the details page, that's actually another special case, but navigating and navigating back within our view works really without any problem. If you also want to cover this, uh, so you reload on a specific page and want to have a back history, you can also add the default href to your back button. And I will just use a slash because that should bring us back to uh, the first page that loads. And in fact, that actually works. It's kind of amazing because there are a lot of redirects in here. If I now go back, it would redirect to slash, then slash app, and then slash app first. Um, well, the Angular router is magic. Um, great, it works. So of course, you could also type in here app first. You could even go, could you go back to app second? Perhaps you could. Let's try. Funny use case. Uh, interesting, really. <laughs> Uh, really interesting, but that's just no, the default back, the standard back would still bring us back here. So let's, let's leave it like this. I don't want to mess up everything. Now, two more things on the split layout. Right now, the breakpoint for uh, the split pane is somewhere around 900 uh, something, 992, I think. Yeah, exactly. Here is the first time the split pane becomes active on a screen. If you want to change this, you can simply add when. So let's say we want to really just open it on bigger screens uh, above, I think, I'm not sure exactly about which. But we see it's definitely not at, yeah, it's right here. So whenever the screen is smaller, we would still have our site menu like usually in place. And the split pane only takes over above this breakpoint. You can check out those breakpoints 
I'll bring it in here. The default once again is 992 and you could set up all these different uh, sizes or you could also use a media query like this to change the appearance and just make it show on uh, really real bigger screens. So that's one part of the customization. And now the next thing is on bigger screens, you might want to now collapse the side menu, which is uh, very common in uh, maybe web applications, um, not Slack, but in other applications as well. And therefore we need to exchange this since we can't use the ion menu button like it is, but we can use it in a tiny bit different. So we will start with an ion menu toggle uh, just to make sure on smaller screens, we're still basically toggling the menu and we're going to set auto height to false once again, because otherwise we wouldn't even see this button. Then we will put our very own button into this. Um, let's just say toggle menu and within we will put an ion icon name menu slot. Uh, no icon only to make it a bit bigger and maybe get the name right. That would be great as well. So now we would see on bigger screens, we actually also got this. It's not really working since I haven't implemented the functionality on small screens. It should actually still toggle the menu. So no changes for small screens still works nice. And now we just need to collapse the split menu side. And I found a very cool solution on or inside a GitHub issue. And it looks like this. Um, I think that code is for perhaps react, not sure, but we can use almost exactly this. Uh, I will copy it in also this kind of strange import, which I found a bit hacky. Um, it will basically look for the split pane within our document and check, uh, the size if something exists and then toggles the split pane visible. What this does is the following. Uh, let's refresh and there we go. Boom. We've collapsed our split pane really with three lines of code. Uh, we're now able on bigger screens to collapse the side menu on small screens. We don't have any problem because uh, the split pane isn't visible anyway. And the same functionality still works. We can go to the details. We can go back. And on bigger screens, we now get the benefits of the split pane. And if we don't want to have it, we can even collapse it. So this really helps to uh, build great layouts. Um, I think you can use the ion split pane to also build a website version of your application quite easily. Um, with this collapsible functionality for the site menu, you could also build an electron application. Really, this is a great addition and I really enjoy the split pane. If you got any more questions, if you want to see more like a uh, split pane web kind of setup, um, let me know. But usually on the web, you have like the navigation bar at the top. You very rarely see the menu on the side anymore. I feel at least well inside the Ionic documentation, it is on the side, right? So let me know if you would like to see a little more about the split pane and working on the web or perhaps combining the split pane even with differing routing concepts um, to have like a more flexible routing on bigger screens and smaller screens. I'm happy to always create about this since I really know the angular routing is usually an area where people have problems. So let me know uh, where you're stuck or what you would like to see and I'm happy to create a new tutorial about it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and stay subscribed so you get notified about all the new tutorials, quick wins and other app development and web development videos on this channel. If you want to learn more about Ionic with in-depth courses, a community of like-minded developers so you can learn and build your apps faster, you should definitely check out the Ionic Academy, which is my code school to help you with everything Ionic with a huge library of courses, material, and a supportive Slack channel so we can get your app out. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you inside the next video. Have a great day and happy coding, Simon.